up until yesterday, tabs were bound to the VS Code window. Sure, you can move one here and have two separate groups, but that's pretty much it. But today, there's one more thing. And basically, if you pick a tab, you drag it outside the VS Code window, well, it creates a new detached tab which is bound to the same VS Code instance. The only actual requirement is to have the insider's version, but we'll get into that later. The reason why I'm so excited is basically here in the VS Code repo. If you head over the issue, and for example, you go on the closed ones, you can sort the closed issue by upvotes. And you will see that the most closed upvoted issue has 2.62 thousand upvotes. But if we go on the open issues, the number one has 2.89 thousand upvotes and it's exactly allow for floating windows. That is the exact feature is being worked on right now. If I scroll down until the bottom, you will find that just last month this has been announced and the VS Code trash bot added the test plan just four days ago, meaning this feature is being worked on and it's almost ready for become live. So this is one or possibly the most awaited feature ever on VS Code. So let's have a closer look about this new feature. First of all, one of the reasons why it's still in preview is because it's still work in progress. And for example, this animation of the tab going back before appearing is something that will be worked on. But apart from that, if you want to get into the insider's version, it's quite easy. Just head over the VS Code page. And here, instead of downloading the stable build, you can find insider version right below. You can click here and basically download VS Code for your operative system and well, that's it, you're now on the insider's version. Cool, but what is the insider's version? It's basically a client that gets updated pretty much every day, which includes always the latest feature that gets merged on the VS Code repository. Does that mean that it's sometimes broken? I mean, yes, it could happen. But as far as I can tell, in the last couple of years, it broke uh, heavily just twice, maybe. And anyway, it got fixed by a few hours. So that's not a big deal. And the advantages are that you can experiment and preview with those special features probably a month or two before they get live. Fun fact, one of those issues were basically that here, opening and closing new folders didn't work. So the only way to navigate to the repository or the way I used was from the files here by writing the, the file name. But anyway, uh, it, as I said, it was fixed in a couple of hours, so not a big deal. And anyway, I also had the stable version still installed. So again, that's okay, that's understandable. So what I noticed so far, for example, the animation issues I just said, the window opens only after the tab goes back. And actually, if you drop the tab here, but you go back with the mouse inside your window, it's as if the event is triggered only after the animation ends. So if you move back the mouse, it doesn't open the new window. But anyway, just wait for a second and it works. From here, if you close this new window with the red X, the issue overview or the tab you have open will basically go back here. Otherwise, if you close the tab from here, it's obviously gone. Same happens if, for example, you have one tab here, you have two tabs here, and let's say this one is empty. If you close the separated window you have here, again with the red X, then both tabs go back to the actual main instance. Speaking of global shortcuts, for example, I like to open the terminal with my keyboard, and obviously if I'm here, you see there's no main menu as the main window. So if I try to open the terminal with my keyboard, you see the terminal opens in the main instance. That is probably what I would expect. So I'm fine with that. And also this isn't confusing as this is not a separate VS Code instance, but it's basically a floating window referring to this main instance. So opening the terminal here is actually fine. Speaking of issues, if you want to track the progress of this new feature, you can filter for this label Workbench Oaks window, and you can find here all the issues that are being worked on, the issues that have been closed, so that you can have an idea on how the feature is progressing. And if you want to submit a new issue, make sure to add this label so that the issue gets properly processed by the VS Code team. 
Giving feedback early is so important because it allows the team to quickly get into your fixes done. And if there's a particular feature you'd like to see implemented, well, suggesting it while the bigger feature is still work in progress has a much higher chances to see it live soon. And with that said, go download the Insiders version, play with this new feature and share feedback on the GitHub issues. But you know what else you can share? Well, you can share this video to your colleagues to let them know about this new feature. By the way, the latest stable VS Code update also had some changes on how Copilot works and the feature Copilot Chat provides. So just in case you are curious, here I released a video specifically on the new features of GitHub Copilot. Well, what can I say? Let's have a look together. And with that said, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my content. I really appreciate. And well, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.